Thank you for joining us in Finding God in the World of Video Games. In today's Rewind, we're taking a look at one of the my least favorite things that I see whenever I'm playing a video game, loading screens. I, I, I truly, I cannot stand them. Nothing breaks up the tension of a climactic cutscene like seeing a loading screen pop up, taking us completely out of the moment and reminding us that we're playing a video game. Whether you're playing classic games that required the patience of Job as the game would pause to load every time we walk out of one room and into another, or just those boring static loading screens during a game installation, one thing never seems to change in the world of video games. We will always have to wait for something cool to happen. The new torture devices that have been inflicted on us as gamers are system updates and mandatory game installs, which for those of you who have not yet enjoyed this particular delight, it amounts to placing the game into your system of choice and then waiting for your system to become capable of playing it. Few moments in life compared to that glorious moment when you remove the plastic from your new game purchase, crack open the case, smell that sweet, sweet new game aroma, carefully remove the disc cartridge from its plastic prison, gentle press into the console in eager anticipation of the game launch, and then it happens. The completely unfeeling notification from your console that your system requires an install or an update in order to process the tasty gaming goodness that's contained on the game you just fed it. And as you watch the loading bar slowly begin to fill, you realize there are actual important things you need to do around your home. And you decide to take this time to do something decidedly unfun while you wait, such as washing dishes, folding laundry, or, you know, feeding your family, because that's honestly very important. Completely torn out of your enjoyment of the experience of loading up the new game for the first time, you're now back to the humdrum everyday life and existence and responsibilities we were kind of trying to escape from by playing a video game. Hours later, after we've completed our honey-do list or tasks for the day, then we recall... I intended to have fun, I go check on my system, and now it's finally ready for us to play. Only now it's not really the same, is it? Now we skip through the opening cinematic that we were eagerly anticipating earlier and bypass the tutorial so we can at least get a few minutes of gaming action in before it's time for bed. Then we die five consecutive times because we have no idea what we're doing. Disc tray gets opened, game removed, power off, enthusiasm lost, and game relegated to the back of our library until the disappointment subsides. Maybe next month when we get the opportunity to play. Now, if you have not felt that pain and frustration yet, I envy you. But even if that has never happened to you in the world of video games, the reality is people by nature do not like to wait. It's not even that we always have better things to do, we just can't abide the concept of desiring something to occur and not having it delivered instantaneously. I mean, think about it. We're, we're beyond just being the microwave generation now. We're, we're the DoorDash generation. We have so many ways that we found to eliminate waiting time and speed up natural processes for our convenience, rather than expose what we already know about ourselves because if you're like me, you're already tired of waiting for me to get to the point. Let's take a look into the actual reasons why we have to wait. I've always considered waiting to be a necessary evil. But after reading Exodus 23 in the Bible, I've realized it's actually a necessary good. In Exodus 23, we find God and Moses conversing on a plan that's going to involve invading the land of Canaan. God has a very specific battle plan, and he personally promised his supernatural assistance in conquering the enemies that Moses and the nation of Israel would find there. But in the midst of all the rules and the regulations and the listing of all these nations that I can barely pronounce, there's two verses that require special attention because it's here we find a critical nugget of knowledge that will help guide us in the solution we're seeking. God tells Moses that the victory over his enemies will not be completed in less than a year. Well, that's kind of an odd statement, right? I mean, God is all-powerful. And he quite recently established that to Moses and the people of Israel. When you, you know, see him drowning the entire Egyptian army in the Red Sea, he can pretty much wipe anyone out in one battle if he chooses to. So it's certainly not his lack of capability, but fortunately for us, God elaborates on this, and his rationale is so simple yet profound. He won't do it faster than that because they are not ready for it. Let's ponder this for a moment. The reason we wait 
is because we are not ready yet. In the case of the Israelite people, God gives them this very down-to-earth and simple, uncomplicated explanation that if he gives them complete and total victory too soon, the land will fall into disrepair, and the wild animals will end up taking over the land, creating even larger problems. The Israelite people were simply unprepared for the enormous task of conquering and caretaking the country before them. So an understanding and all-knowing God decided to give them the land piece by piece instead. This was incredibly surprising to me. I know I have prayed to God many times for certain opportunities, or maybe what I considered to be a necessary material blessing, only to fail to receive what I had desired. Since I truly believed what I was asking for was in the will of God for my life, it's a pretty frustrating experience. Didn't God promise us that if we seek Him first, He would give us the desires of our hearts? But now, a very basic principle has become clear. See, God in His infinite wisdom will not give us what we are unprepared to handle. If we have a three-year-old child, would we go out today and purchase them a new current year model sedan for them to drive? I mean, of course not. It'll be many years before this child has the need of independent transportation. Right now, they would be overwhelmed with the gift. Over the years, the car would fall apart due to lack of use. It would depreciate in value. By the time the child was old enough to finally drive that sedan, it would be hopelessly outdated. So we wait, not because we don't love them, or we don't intend to give them a vehicle when they're ready for it, simply because they're not able to handle the responsibilities of owning the vehicle at this time. And would we let them drive the vehicle at three years of age? No, not unless you want to get into some negligence issues that you probably don't want to deal with. Our loving Heavenly Father is aware of those very same circumstances in our lives. And sometimes He must answer our prayers little by little. Not because He lacks the power or sympathy, but because we lack the ability to handle the full answer all at once. When you wonder why God hasn't seen fit to give us maybe the job we feel we're ready for, the relationship we've been craving, the house of our dreams, or whatever else has captivated the desires of our hearts, it's not that you necessarily have done anything wrong or that he doesn't intend to give it to you when the time is right. Jesus explained to us in Matthew 6 that God is both a superior parent and the giver of perfect gifts, giving us the promise that if we seek God first, he will give us all that we need. In the case of the nation of Israel, they were simply not prepared to do all the caretaking the land would require. They would need to grow both in size and capabilities to handle the challenge. Forty years later, once they were ready, they began their conquest of the land and subjugated it with God's help, just as he had promised. They simply had to wait until they were ready. Now, in the case of my video game loading screens, the truth of the matter is the system updates serve a very useful purpose. They contain security updates that can protect me from account theft. They'll give my system new capabilities, and once they're installed, they'll give my applications use beyond what I had expected. Ultimately, I end up with a superior gaming experience for my patients. We'll never enjoy the act of waiting. It will always feel unnecessary, unwanted, and unappreciated but we can at least take a step in the direction of understanding its reason for existing in our lives and accept the reality that waiting on God is not a purposeless waste of time. To the contrary, it's actually God waiting on us. He will never overload us. We may want that new job, but God knows the additional money may not offset the time that we spend away from our family. We may still wish God would make that special someone notice that we are there for once, but he knows that we may have some loose ends to tie up before we're truly ready to take on all that that new relationship might entail. It's actually proof of God's kindness that he is showing uh, when he makes us wait for that perfect timing. We may never understand, and we will surely never fall in love with the waiting process, but we can take heart in knowing that it is all part of a deliberate plan for our benefit. Ultimately, we will get to the promised land, just as Israel did, and eventually, I did get to sit down and play the game I was waiting for, because all those firmware updates finally do come to an end. And you will truly get what God has promised you in the time you're ready to handle it, and it will be all that you hoped and waited for.